Habitable, just like habit trail, just like hamster wheel, just like mama earth they steal, just like everything keeps us poor people out of information gathering. Yeah, take that for one one back. Your knowledge, your fierceness to fight this ongoing anti-poor people attack. Yeah, this podcast, poem cast from this jailhouse tenant lawyer is dedicated to the concept of habitability and how to fight the end of these national eviction moratoriums and local and state. So let's back it up, family. First of all, the lie, the first lie is a lie of rent. And I encourage you to read my extensive work on this as we all face this collective violence called evictions in a global pandemic, not to mention the sweeps of our houseless bodies like we are trash and the evictions of already houseless peoples from these Shelter in place, not really motels. And how are you going to shelter in place when you don't even got a place? Because guess what? They're all connected. Every tenant is one paper notice away from homelessness. One bloodstained dollar check. One crisis. One emergency. One moment of disrespect. So let's get it clear. Evictions in a global pandemic is straight up capitalist violence. And it's rooted in that lie called rent. The other lie is that anyone owns Mama Earth in the first damn place, which is why us poor houseless indigenous peoples with leadership and respect and love and permission from our First Nations Familias of the Ohlone Lashan Nation, shout out to Sigourte Lantra, Janella, Karina, Fui, and so many more. But it's why we're working so hard to unsell Mama Earth and homefulness the world. And any other poor, houseless, indigenous peoples interested in learning this template and or conscious peoples with race and class privilege who'd like to be part of this liberation of bloodstained dollars into love-stained dollars, into the bank of community reparations. This poverty scholar is traversing Mama Earth in 2021 to share this medicine, spread this template with as many poor people as possible. So hit me up at Poverty Scholar at Twitter or poormag at gmail.com. Invite me to your town, shelter, church, or encampment. And thirdly, because of the aforementioned lies, which we know become settler colonial laws, the state and colonial courts heavily support the scam lords first. Yeah, all the biases are for the scam lords. So our battles to resist these lies, I mean laws, and this bias is not easy. But this jailhouse tenant lawyer calls herself that because I did three months in county jail for the act, for the poverty crime of being houseless in this stolen indigenous holler. And because of that and many more moments on the street, in bus shelters, in park benches, in the back seats of our hoopties for me and Ma throughout my childhood and young adulthood, I had to learn scam lord tenant law better than most paper lawyers who go to the institutional schools because me and my poor mama couldn't afford the rent. Guess what? We were poor. And because of our ongoing intense poverty in these occupied lands, we were constantly unhoused. And if we were housed, it was in substandard poor people housing where the scam lords were always pooling illegal-ish and still charging us exorbitant rent and still illegally evicting us and still hitting us with those bloody paper trails called three-day notice to pay rent or quit, among other capitalist crimes that people get away with because of race and class privilege in this occupied land. But 
Never fear. There are real ways you can fight back, which is why this jailhouse tenant lawyer is here. And today's topic is habitability and your rights as a tenant. If your apartment, home, or room is hazardous to you and your family's health, you have a legal case. So please sit with me as we unpack this this, uh, legalese and make it a little bit more simplified and understood so that we can all fight and all take this knowledge back. In addition, there is a written version of this podcast on poormagazine.org under my blog, or you can also get my blog at lisatinygraygarcia.com. Just click on blog or or podcast. And disclaimer, with love. Yeah, I did say a disclaimer with love. In this series, landlords, landolords, are heretofore referred to as scam lords. Of course, we know the landolord concept is rooted in settler colonial Uh, European pauper laws and the landed gentry, i.e. the people that the king sent out to take indigenous people's land, even in those lands. But I refer to landlords as scam lords. It doesn't mean that there are not some decent loving people. There are not some decent loving human people who think they own Mama Earth. Many of you might be listening to me, but Sadly, like the polis, I have not had the blessing yet of meeting one. And ultimately, like the myth of polis, we really need to stop thinking collectively that anyone owning Mama Earth is a given, nice or honest or not. So with respect and love, landowners out there who might be nice, I appreciate you. And I also respectfully disagree and I also invite you humbly to come to People School's next session of the Degentrification Decolonization Seminar on Zoom. Anyway, first of all, what even constitutes habitability? In other words, what does that word even mean? And I will um, front load this poem podcast by saying that a lot of these words scare people scare people because of what I call linguistic domination. The idea is that certain people have been taught certain information, which is all rooted in race and class privilege. Don't get it twisted. And sometimes us poor people have been told we can't write and told we only speak in abonics or told we only have a sixth grade education, which I do, by the way. I never went to institutions of learning, had to drop out of school in the sixth grade and enroll full-time in a school of hard knocks, which I'm proud to say I graduated with a Ph.D. in poverty and jailhouse law. But I say that to say do not get intimidated by their code words. they just words, okay? And words like puzzles can be unpacked and diagrammed and re-diagrammed and put back together. So let's think of it like that journey with me on the unpacking of these code words. So, the definition is the conformance, that means the bringing together, of a residence or abode, no, excuse me, (laughs) the conformance, which means conformity, which means going along with, a residence or abode to the implied warranty of habitability. A residence that complies is said to be habitable. Habitability is an implied warranty or contract, meaning it does not have to express. It does not have to be an express written contract, covenant, or provision of a contract. Very important. So that Whitepedia definition might have left you more confused. But what it really means, real talk, is you have the basic right to a safe, clean, bug-free, mold-free apartment or home with working and safe plumbing, electrical sockets, no holes in your walls, working doors, windows, showers, toilets, elevators, stairs, faucets, and so many more. Things that make up what you are paying your scam lord for. 
Because you have to understand, you are not just paying your scam lord for the right slash privilege to live under the roof they think they own. So this is a very important piece of it. There is this implied or understood guarantee, which is what warranty means, that that home, apartment, or room will be safe and clean and all of the aforementioned things and in good working order. And the crucial line and the definition that you need to remember is the words implied warranty, meaning if it is not stated in your rental agreements or leases or or conversations with your scam lords, you have the right to it because it's implied in all negotiations between all tenants and all scam lords. This is very important. Next session, contracts, verbal or physical. In your original agreement or lease that you may or may not have signed or have between you and your scam lord, they have outlined the things they are guaranteeing you as a tenant. Now, again, I repeat, they have outlined certain things that does not mean that habitability isn't one of them even if they don't mention it, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Those contracts are legal binding agreements, meaning that in they kangaroo courts, we, as in you, can use it to fight for your rights. In a stolen land littered with what I call bloody paper trails of treaties, mortgages, grant deeds, foreclosure notices, tax liens, blight notices, eviction notices, liens, It's all about the paper. You already know. So if you have anything in writing, be it digital, email, text, or a piece of paper, think of this as fighting paper with paper. And so we need to review it as boring and tedious as that is. Poor people alert. For those of you who don't have a contract, a physical piece of paper, a text, uh, an email, a rental agreement, or a lease. You may only have a conversation or a handshake or a nod between you and your scam lord. Guess what, fam? You still have rights. This is called a verbal novation and has legal rights in a court of law and is dictated by old school settler colonial laws, I mean laws, that are real. Next week's column and podcast will be dedicated to this situation. But in the meantime, please stop believing their smarmy lies about you need to get out, GTFO, any of their text threats if you haven't paid them or if they've decided they don't like you or if you, you know, they figured it realized they could flip your spot and make more money or they finally got their money to do that. Uh Uh-uh. You have tenants' rights as long as you have been in that space, over 30 days. Now, you might not have it on a piece of paper, but you have rights. Also, for unroofed residents, my fellow houseless folks, these same laws can apply but are harder to enforce in the capitalist, racist, classist system. Our comrades at United Front Against Displacement, Shout Out, Wood Street Encampment, and many more have fought this particular issue with the Wood Street Encampment in West Oakland. And this struggle continues. But, please, it's not worth giving up. And more on this next week. But back to habitability specifically. As long as you have been a resident in on this land under that roof, you are not only have rights to residency, but to a livable, habitable home, i.e. that implied warranty I spoke about. Named or not. So let's go back to that contract. In case you have one. If you still have a copy of it, please bring it out. Let's reread every line. Issues of basic habitability, named or unnamed, vary from state to state, city to city, all across the United Snakes of America land. For instance, in occupied uh, Lenape territory, New York, city basic rental agreement, they name habitability. In the basic agreement. It's quite amazing. 
But in the California Basic Agreement, habitability, habitability, I can't even speak, is buried under repairs by landlord. So in other words, it could be called something else, it could be referred to as something else, or it could be deep inside your contract under a different heading. So in this case, in the California Basic Tenant Landlord Agreement, number 14, repairs by landlord. Where repair is the responsibility of the landlord, tenant must notify landlord with a written notice stating what item needs servicing or repair. Tenant must give landlord a reasonable opportunities to service or repair said item. Tenant acknowledges that rent will not be withheld unless a written notice has been served on landlord, giving landlord a reasonable time to fix said item within the meaning of Civil Code Section 1942. Under no circumstances may tenant withhold rent unless said item constitutes a substantial breach of the warranties of habitability as stated in Code of Civil Procedure Section 1174.2. Now, there's many things to pull out of that, but one of the most important ones is that if you notice They said that you had to give notice to your landlord about the thing that needs to be fixed, right? About the thing that makes your apartment uninhabitable, the broken toilet, the holes in the wall, the roof caving in, the infestation of parasites, on and on the lift goes. If you don't give them a notice, which means a letter notice, legal notice, then they can say that you didn't tell them. And that's a loophole. Loophole is another code for them to get around uh, not having to fix it and then also being able to evict you. So it's really important because when we get on further to the um, legal notice that you're going to write them, you need to know that the most important thing you need to do is actually tell them that you even have a problem. Because if you suddenly tell them that your place is uninhabitable and now you're not paying rent, they can turn around and legally give you a three-day notice to pay rent or quit. They can legally uh, say that you didn't give them proper notice. And notice, again, has to be in writing. Not just a text and not just an email. But if you have a snail mail address for them, also a piece of paper in an envelope with a stamp. But an email also, and then if all you have for them is a text, then that's what you do. That's what you work with. Um, and you keep a you know record of all these. You keep your texts, so you've got to keep them. If for some reason you lose them, that's very serious because they can turn around and say they never received it, and they do smarmy-ish like that. So that said, the other thing they not repairs by landlord notice, they did not tell you an exact amount of time. So, depending on the severity of the problem, so for instance, if it's a severe, like a broken toilet that isn't just take a plunger and is flooding all over your apartment, you call them, which is your emergency way, right? And if they don't answer the call, you basically have maybe three to four hours or less before you are forced to call in a private contractor or leave the unit if you don't have the money to call a private contractor because now the whole place has been uh, flooded, right? So there's different kinds of noticing. But what I want to be really real with you guys is even if you send them an emergency text and call them because something very serious has happened, um, similarly like a fire or a spark in an electrical outlet that you know is about to go on fire, Uh, an appliance that is extremely, you know, dangerous somehow, like an oven that's leaking gas. These are things that you have to exit the unit, otherwise you could risk death. But you still have to follow it up with a written text, email, and preferably paper notice. Because at this point now, you probably have to go stay with a friend, stay in your car, or go stay in a motel. 
And their legal liability is they need to put you up in a motel. So it's also very important uh, that you're following up with that emergency call and emergency text with a piece of paper slash an email. And as much as that's a hassle, pain in the nuts, etc., you have to do it to cover your perennial ass. So, just like everywhere in the United States, in the so-called progressive state of Khalifa Saslan, we have anti-poor people hate and laws that protect the scam lord and never the tenant. So that's another thing you need to know off the cuff. In cities with stronger rent control laws, like the cities of Berkeley and San Francisco, they have an extensive separate clause and paragraph about mold, which is a huge and serious issue and is rarely named in these scam lord agreements. This jailhouse tenant lawyer almost died from mold poisoning in our poor people housing. And so often when I tried to get help from lawyers, advocates, or city agencies, the answer was, mm, sorry, there's nothing we can do. This is a testament to all the powerful tenant warriors and advocates fighting out there, uh, like Bobby Lopez, like Ace, like the San Francisco Tenants Union, and so many more, EYA, Tenant Gulick, Ted Gulickson, um, who didn't stop fighting and was able to push back on the legislations that are out there and make them a little bit more safe and fair for tenants. Conversely, as I said, in the state of New York, they actually list habitability as a separate clause and right of tenants, whereas so many cities and counties hide it under other areas in the contract or don't mention it at all. Um, so I just want to say shouts out to any New York tenants who might be listening. You can name the habitability clause in uh, your claims. Very important to actually look at a contract that you might have to find the current version of it, even if you have an old one, and cite it. Cite it means mention it, name it, and repeat it in your letter of notice, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, in San Francisco, they never directly say habitability, but it's covered and talked around in, quote, conditions of premises, inventory of premises, which was what you have to check off when you move in, and maintenance and alterations. So the reason it's important to tease out these parts as we unpack the notion of habitability and even this idea of contracts at all is you, the tenant, can cite it or use it for your arguments if you end up in a legal case with your scam lord, as this is urgent to back up your legal case. In addition, for folks who do not have a written agreement, and for all of you reading this, there is still that aforementioned implied or inherent, inherent warranty responsibility of all income property owners to provide a safe space in exchange for the money rent you pay to live there. This is important as it protects all tenants and considered, again, a basic covenant or agreement between tenant and scam lord. So let's move on to how to fight for habitability. The first and foremost way to fight is to document, document, document. As I said already, you have to build a habitability claim. You can't just say it overnight. You have to capture the uninhabitability, and then you have to give notice to your scam lord so that they can uh, repair, fix, or resolve the habitability claims of your apartment or home. In you have to do it in as many ways as possible. So first of all, you want to take pictures. You want to take pictures with your phone or a regular camera and save them or send them to your email account because you need to include them as attachments on your letter or text to the scam lords. And then eventually print them out and make them physical paper pictures. Number two, inspections. Depending on where you live, you can make mold, bed bug, or pest infestation, dangerous leaks, caving in floors, or exposed leaky broken roofs, and other severe health hazard claims to the public health departments of your city. For structural issues like framing and, you know, roofs falling in, etc., you can call the Department of Building Inspection in your city. This also covers things like electrical wiring, leaks, severe leaks, and sometimes fire departments for obvious electrical or other severe fire hazards. 
private contractors. You can have private contractors, in other words, plumbers, electricians, handy persons, even friends of yours who are willing to testify and write up a sheet, <coughs> come out and do assessments of your repair needs and write up estimates of repairs that you can include or take a picture of and include as attachments in your email claims. Once you have collected all these documents, you create a letter, code switching into your best white voice, yes, I did say white voice, with the following legalese language. This is, that's where you put your name, I have been a tenant at since such and such a date. The following is a legal notice of uninhabitability documenting the health hazards and breaches of our original rental contract that states that you as a landlord have a responsibility to maintain a clean and safe unit. As of, there's a date, there has been the following emergency repairs needed and or long-term repairs in my unit. Attached are pictures and estimates and documenting the situation which is causing my unit to be dangerous to my health and the health of my family. This is my notice to my to you. This is my notice to you uh, to repair, resolve, and or fix these serious issues by such and such a date. If they are not fixed or resolved, I will cease and desist paying rent until such time as the repairs are fixed. The other option is I will contract a repair person to fix the repairs and deduct that cost from the rent. If the cost of repairs exceeds my rent, then I will deduct it from the future rent and until it gets paid back. Now, this can change and morph depending on each situation and the severity of each situation. So I just want you to understand that. Sadly, there is no fixed way that we can write this letter. There are possible additions as well that are extremely important in your habitability claim, which are if you have a disabled adult, if you are a disabled adult, or if you have a minor child or disabled minor child living with you or an elder, under the Americans with Disability Act, you have the right to demand access to blah, 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 basically reimbursement um, and resolution of this problem. And or in addition, there is a disabled adult elder child residing in the unit who's re- protected under the ADA. Option two, and this is a very important one, people don't know that they have the right to stay in a motel. You don't have to be homeless if your place is unsafe to live in. And the scam lord has to cover your motel. But you also have to tell them, I will need to stay in a motel or hotel until such time as these repairs are made, as the unit is unlivable and there is no one else I can stay with. It is necessary that you pay for the motel or reimburse me for the cost of the motel, as this is the owner's liability to provide a safe living condition for myself and my family. The above text can change and expand depending on you. Basically, if you have minor children or disabled persons, or elders, or you yourself are a person who lives with a disability. And this is one of the crucial poor people danger alerts. Please listen, family. If you withhold rent or do not pay a portion of it, or even if you do everything I said, this jailhouse tenant lawyer cannot promise you that your scan lord will not serve you with a three-day notice to pay rent or quit or a 30-day notice to terminate tenancy. Or even more, scam lord, will skip over all of that and somehow get a judgment for possession, which means they're coming in with the sheriff. But the very real reality is many of us poor folks, working class, disabled, mama tenants, father tenants, live with and normalize unlivable conditions because of our terror of being houseless, because of our terror 
of these scam lords' power over us. And if you don't have the rent anyway, family, because of the global pandemic's impact on your income, this is time to pull all the tools out of the perennial scam lord tenant tool chest to fight for your rights to housing. So, I have to tell you, if you get those notices, first of all, don't say I didn't tell you. You have to face them with strength because they'll be hard to deal with. And if you don't want to get those notices because of the trigger alert, then the PTSD and the way they could mess you up, then don't do what I'm suggesting, please. Because I can't save you from that kangaroo court, from that fake-ass judge, and from that biased settler colonial lie, I mean law, that always judges on the, on the possession of the scam lord. But if you're ready to go at it, guns blazing, paper blazing, I'm with you all the way. Please check back next week to learn more about verbal novations. Shout out to other landlord, scam lord, tenant advocates and lawyers, papered and non-papered, to join me in a national Know Your Rights webinar for tenants. Uh, check out my website, www. LisaTinyGreyGarcia.com to find some of the other books and work that we do to enroll in people school www.RacePovertyMediaJustice.org and if you want to invite this poverty scholar, jailhouse tenant, lawyer to your town, encampment church or roof hit me up at PoorMag at gmail.com and in the meanwhile remember Change won't come from a savior, pimp, or an institution. Change will only come from a poor people led revolution. The roof is leaking, the pipe without water. I think the house still happens in the lights. I don't buy a mop, I send my fear on the rent. And yet, it's going like we don't have a lot of nature, Miss Alan Lahan. We can't take the pressure on your yard. Oh no, just he's a Miss Alan Lahan. We can't take the pressure on your yard. Oh no, send my fire, mop, I send my fear on the rent.